Hello, in this video I want to look at how you can make a Twitter bot that replies to other tweets. So in all of the previous bot tutorials that I've made so far, the tweets happen on a schedule. Every five minutes, every ten minutes, once an hour. But something that you can do is actually have a bot participate in the conversation. It can look for a hashtag, it can look for at mentions of its own account, uh, it can tweet when somebody favorites its tweet. You know, whatever you can imagine is possible. So let's look at one example of that, which is a bot that replies to tweets that are sent to that particular bot. So what I'm going to do uh, first is let's just review for a second the what's the sort of core pieces of the Twitter API itself. So there is a get request, there is a post request, and there is a stream request. Request is maybe the wrong word. These are the sort of three commands or method calls or endpoints, I think, one of these terms that you can execute on the API. Get is something that you might use for like a one-time search. So just give me all the tweets with the hashtag rainbow. Post is the thing to actually like post a tweet, to tweet, 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 tweet. So that's the thing that you tweet. How many times can I say tweet in one video? Count them, something like that. Now, this is a sort of new feature that I want to spend some time looking at in this particular video. Now, we saw it before in an example where I used a user stream to see if somebody followed me. But so there are, a stream is like a continuous connection to Twitter. So anytime a certain kind of event happens, I want to execute a function in my code. So anytime somebody posts a tweet with a certain hashtag, or anytime someone at mentions me in a tweet, or anytime somebody favorites my tweets, I want to connect to a stream. There are three kinds of streams, user, uh, public, and I think another one's called like site stream. I have no idea what the site stream is. Somebody who understands that, write that in the comments. But the public stream is where you want to look, have an event tied to just the public timeline of Twitter. So look for anytime somebody tweets with a certain hashtag, for example, you do that with the public stream. The user stream are any events that are tied to a particular user, in this case that user being me. So this is what I want to use if somebody at mentions me in a tweet. And there's a difference between an at reply and an at mention, which is sort of a subtle thing but kind of important. So if I come back over here, what I have now is from one of my previous videos, I made a follow bot. So this particular uh, Twitter bot uh, connects to a user stream and it sets up a callback called followed for a follow event. So this function right here will execute anytime somebody follows me. But I want to change this. I want to change it's still a user stream but I want the event to be a tweet event and uh, I don't know it could uh, I'll call uh, I don't know what to call this followed made sense but I'll just call it like tweet event. So now I now anytime there is a tweet event I want this function to trigger. Now, the tricky thing here is a tweet event for a particular user encompasses a ton of things. So what I need to do is figure out was this actually a tweet that was sent in reply to me? So how do I do that? Now, one thing I could do is I could go find the Twitter API website, look in the developer documentations, because I need to look at all the metadata in this event message variable. Like that's all the stuff associated with the tweet. Who sent it? What time did they send it? What was the text of their tweet? Were there any hashtags in the tweet? All that kind of stuff. So I need to look at the documentation for that. The documentation is kind of very stressful. It's very hard to look at. I, I should post a link to it, but here's a little trick that I sometimes do, and I'm just gonna pull this code from a previous example. Not a previous example, another example that I have preset. I have three lines of code right here that I'm copying over in, and, and we'll look at them, let's look at them and examine them. So I'm gonna also take this out, and put this in, and put this in. This is sort of extraneous code, sorry. So what this is doing, is this is using a node module called FS, file system. It allows you to read and write the files from your local hard drive. And I'm also taking the, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm taking this event message and I'm using json.stringify, which is a way of taking a JavaScript object and turning it into a string because what I ultimately want to do is write that out to a file, tweet.json. So this way, I'm not doing, I'm not, this has nothing to do with making, with the bot, running the bot itself. This is purely for me to figure out like what's all that stuff. Because I could just look at, I could look at the Twitter documentation or I could say console.log event message. But if I say that, all of this nonsense is going to be in the terminal window. It's going to be impossible to wade through. So I find writing it to a file is kind of useful. So I'm going to uh, run this particular bot. Whoops. 
It's actually already running. Uh, I'm going to run it. You can see it says the replier bot is starting. And then uh, if somebody is watching live, you can tweet at A2ZITP. But I'm just going to go do it over from my account. Now, fortunately, I kind of already did this earlier. So you can see that there is a tweet.json file. This actually would have just appeared out of thin air um, when that tweet uh, was sent. Um, but so I'm going to look now in that file. And you can see, ah, there it is. Now, I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to quickly stop the bot. So, although it would be fun to see this live update as other people tweet to me. But um, you can see here now, this is all of the metadata associated with that particular tweet. You can see the tweet is from me, Daniel Schiffman. You can see the tweet goes to, oh, that's my URL. <laughs> you can see that's my, anyway, there's all this information about the user that sent that tweet. This is a key thing in reply to screen name. This was a tweet sent to at A2ZITP. So I, if I want to only look for tweets that were sent to me, then that's what I want to do. Now, by the way, this is a subtle difference. Here is if it, the tweet, if I, if my username is the first thing in the tweet. I know it's tricky here, like my username. I have two usernames in this situation because I sent it to myself. But the bot is a 2 zitp and I should name it Coding Rainbow Bot. But and me, this like third-party person who doesn't exist inside this, in this room, but it's me still to say, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, that's the person who sent the tweet. So my the tweet that Daniel Schiffman, I'm talking about myself, the third person, sent to me, the bot, because I am the bot, uh, uh, is this. That's what I'm looking at the data for. So it was in reply to the bot, A to Z, I, T, P. But if I scroll down here, there's something called entities. And you can see here is also a list of user mentions. So if that tweet mentioned other people, or if the tweet mentioned A to Z ITP, but not as the very first part of the tweet, you would see it over here. So okay, so that was a little bit long-winded, but this is the kind of thing, now you could, you could spend your Sunday afternoon reading this JSON file, because there's tons of information there, location, all sorts of metadata associated with the tweet. But all I really care about is in reply to screen name for the moment. So what I want to do is go back to my code, and I, want, I don't need to write that file anymore. The file is there. And I want to just say first, okay, so reply to equals event message dot in reply to screen name. So I want to pull that piece of data out. And while we're here, why don't I also pull um, the, the text of the tweet itself? So I'll say that if you uh, was in event message dot text. If you look here, right, this is the actual uh, text at A to Z. Oh, and you know what I want? I want who it's from. User dot screen underscore name. So I also want to know who the tweet is from, from equals user, oh sorry, event message dot user dot screen underscore name. So again, if reading through JSON files is new to you, let me refer you to one of my previous videos about learning the JSON format and how to go through JSON format. I'll try to have a link to that. Ask me in the comments if I don't. But this is the kind of thing you need to do. It's detective work about figuring out how to get the data that you want out of a particular JSON file. So now, all I want to do is say, let's say I want to send replies back. I only want to send a reply back if this was, in fact, a tweet that was sent to me. And what might I say? I might say, uh, new tweet equals uh, at whoever this was from. Thank you for tweeting me, coding rainbow. So you can see here, I'm just creating any time that somebody sent a tweet to me, I'm sending a tweet back to them. And then I already have from the previous examples this function that I can call tweet it with some text, and it just sends that out. So I can now say tweet it the new tweet. Oops, and I, I got to use the same variable name. There it is. So now let's go back and run this. If anybody is watching, I'm going to do this myself, but tweet to at a 2 z i t p And you know what? Just let's be a little bit more methodical about this. Let's put console.log uh, reply, re reply to, and then uh, from. So we can at least see the tweets, um, who, who they came, who it was sent to, which should be me, and who it's from. So, uh, and you'll notice I'm not putting that inside the if statement, so there's going to be a lot more events than just the events that are particular replies to this particular user. OK, so let me run this. Uh, it's going, so now we have to wait. We don't have to wait. I'm going to come over here and tweet it myself again. A to Z I T P. Hello, is this working? Please say it is working. And I'm going to send that tweet. And that tweet was sent. Uh, it worked. Ah, so you see a tweet. Uh, other people are tweeting, and you can see 
that those, the tweets are going back. So uh, you know, let's look on Twitter just to like see that this is happening. Um, so you can see, oh, I had you can see here that I'm going into the replies that uh, Benjamin Habert, thank you for doing that. Uh, I sent a thank you for tweeting at me reply uh, to uh, a particular tweet that uh, Benjamin Habert sent. I don't know why it's not showing up in the conversation. I'll go to uh, and you can see <laughs> you can see here. What would you do if I put a swear word in this? That's a good question. So this opens up. I mean, that's the perfect question to ask right now. So I haven't really done anything other than like essentially like hello world replying bot because I'm just saying thank you for tweeting me like I'm some sort of like horrible spamming you know marketing robot just to like always say thank you um, but uh, ultimately what you might want to do is make use of what's in that text variable so if somebody tweets at you perhaps they tweet a few key words you go look those words up in the wordnik API <laughs> I have a video about the wordnik API and you send them back a poem using those words. Or, you know, as an exercise, one of my examples, which I'll post along with this, is I take their tweet and I reverse all the characters and I send it back. So that's like the reverse text bot, basically. So I, I, you watching this, I imagine, are a very creative person with lots of ideas. I don't have any good ideas right now. But you can see how this gives you the framework. And what I would like to do in the next video, which maybe might, might not be told, hopefully will be soon, as soon as I can get to making it, uh, we'll look at what if somebody tweets at me not just text but an image. Can I download that image, process that image, and send it back? Okay, so thanks for watching this particular video, another uh, uh, addition to the set of Twitterbot tutorials. And I have a um, long list of topics that I hope to get to and I hope to be able to have a longer session sometime soon where I make more of them. I don't know why I'm including this in this video. You should have stopped watching it by now. I'm going to hit stop. <laughs>